All right. So I was just going to skip it, but I'm going to go ahead and do one more just in case, because this can be a little bit confusing. All right. So uh, we're supposed to select the representations that do not change the location of this given point. So the point I'm given has a radius of two. So I'm going to count out two. So here's one, two. And then I'm supposed to swing down negative two pi's over three. So I will be right here. So I want to land right there in quadrant two. Or sorry, three. Ah. All right. So first of all, does this one make it happen? You can't see. Does this, uh, does this polar coordinate land me in the same spot? So if I count out two, radius of positive two, and then swing down five pi's over three, I will end up back in quadrant one. So that's not going to work. So I can't use that one. What about two? So count out two, and then swing positive four pi's over three. Well, that lands me exactly where I need to be. So I like B. Um, so this one says, now remember to do the negative on the radius last. So I'm going to count out positive two. I'm going to swing down pi over six. And now pay attention to the negative and go straight across. And that lands me somewhere in there. That's in quadrant two, so no. So let's do this one. And it says move out positive two, swing down five pi's over three. So I'm going to come around all the way over here. Um, and then it's do what the negative says and cross back through. And that lands me where I need to be. And for the third time, uh, you don't need to be dead on exactly. Basically, you just need to be in the quadrant. In other words, it's not going to make you land here when you should be here. Okay. As long as you land in the quadrant, that's going to be the right answer. All right, so now we're going to do some conversions. And what I want to do is, um, again, you have this formula sheet that you need to download. Um, you really, and I should have told you this before, you only have to print off the first sheet. There's a back side, and this tells you uh, some of the stuff that we would use this for, um, like in Cal 2. So if you wanted to make really, really pretty pictures, if you wanted to make roses and this kind of stuff, these are the formulas that make those. Um, so working through this, if I want to convert, so this says I've got a rectangular coordinate of negative two root three comma negative two. That is in quadrant three. Okay, so I know this looks weird, but all this is is a coordinate. So I would go left this amount and I would go down this amount. So the question is, how do I find the polar coordinates of this so that my radius is positive and I'm within one lap of the unit circle? In other words, I just want to land in the same spot. So the first thing you want to do is find your angle measure. And that's where this is going to come into play. I can find the tangent of theta by using this ratio. Okay, so I'm going to take my y coordinate, which is negative 2, over my x coordinate, which is a negative 2 root 3. And then I'm going to set that equal to tangent theta. Okay, so just that's your y over your x, and that equals tangent theta. Well, my twos are going to reduce, my negatives are going to reduce, and when I rationalize this, I'm going to end up with multiply top and bottom by root three. I will find out that tangent theta equals root three over three. So where on the unit circle, because I'm trying to convert back into rectangular, where on the unit circle does tangent have a positive ratio of root three over three? It's going to happen in quadrant one and in quadrant three. And so where's that going to be? That's going to be at seven pi over six. Okay, so at seven pi over six, that is where that's going to be. Now, how do I find my radius? My radius is simply going to be build a triangle. Okay, so I know if I'm going to be from here, so this is rectangular. I need to go left this far, so negative 2 root 3. I need to go down 2, so there's 2. All I need is the hypotenuse. So your radius will be the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So negative 2 root 3 squared plus negative 2 squared will give me r squared. Okay, So x squared plus y squared is r squared. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Root 3 times itself is just 3. So this turns into 4 times 3, which is 12. OK, 
okay? Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. And so I get plus 4 plus 4. So that tells me that my radius squared is 16. So, well, what's the square root of 16? Mm -hmm. It's 4. And so this is the polar coordinates of this point right here. So what did I do first? Use the ratio of y to x to find the tangent of theta. That will tell you the angle measure. Then build a triangle, and that's going to tell you your radius. Okay, so uh, let's try another one. Hang on. Uh, number 14 says, I am given the rectangular coordinates of 0, negative 6. So I'm at 0, negative 6. Find the polar coordinates. So I'm going to graph it first. So if I'm at 0, and I go to negative 6, and now pay attention to what it says. Hang on. Where is it? My r needs to be positive, and I need to be within one lap of the unit circle. Well, here's the fun part. You don't even need to do any conversion, because first of all, what's your radius going to be? Well, if I came out six units and swung around six, that was lovely. Okay, swing around six, your radius is six all day long. So my radius is six. And then how far around did I swing? I swung around three pies over two. But if you didn't see that, okay, what are you going to do? You're going to do the tangent of theta is y over x. So where is tangent undefined? And so remember, you want to be down here. Tangent is undefined at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. Okay, so I know I need the 3 pi over 2. Well, then all you need to do is realize that you counted 6 units, and that's your radius. Okay, so now I need to do some additional conversions. So in rectangular system, I have an equation this time. You can't see what I'm looking at. I'm at 6x plus y is 10. Okay, so 6x plus y is 10. Now, traditionally, in a rectangular system, we would get this set equal to y. So I would solve this thing for y, and it would be y equals negative 6x plus 10. And I would know that it's a line with a negative slope, blah, blah, blah. When we are in a, or in a polar system, I want, it get, I want it set to r. So instead of a y equals, I want an r equals. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at is I got some x's. I need to get rid of those x's. So instead of an x, what am I going to put? I'm going to put r cosine theta. So I've got 6r cosine theta plus, well, what's my y? Instead of a y, I'm going to put r sine theta. So I have plus 1r sine theta equals 10. And so now I need to get a single r. If I cannot put these together, I need to factor out an r. So I'm going to factor r out, and that gives me 6 cosine theta plus sine theta equals 10. And now I'm one step away from being done. I'm just going to divide both sides by this. So in polar coordinates, this would be 10 over 6 cosine theta plus sine theta, and then you're done. It looks completely weird, but if you were to graph this in polar coordinates, you would get a line, okay? That's all you need to know. Um, so let's do another one. This says convert the rectangular equation to a polar equation. So I am given y equals 2, okay? That's where I'm starting. I'm in rectangular world, and y equals 2. Well, instead of y, what do I need to put? I need to put r sine theta. So instead of y, I put r sine theta equals 2, and now just get r by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by sine theta. So this becomes 2 over sine theta. And if you want to, you should also recognize that 1 over sine is the same thing as cosecant. So you could write that either way, okay? So it's either 2 over sine or it's 2 cosecant. Either way is fine, okay? And that's it. That's all you do. All right, so let's find another couple just for fun because I would really like to keep this to two videos. Um, all right, so I am in a polar world. So I've got a polar equation of r equals 2. So if I have r equals 2, 
Well, the issue is I need to introduce X's and Y's. Okay, the way I'm going to introduce X's and Y's if, is if I've got an R squared. Because if I've got an R squared, I can swap it out with an X squared and a Y squared. You have two options to introduce an R squared. You can either square both sides, which is what I'm going to do here, or you can multiply both sides by R. So I'm going to do that first so I can show you why it's a bad idea. If I multiply both sides by R, I'll have two or r squared equals 2r. Well, now this can be x squared plus y squared, but then I'm stuck with an r. So I don't want to do that. So all I'm going to do is mess that up, is I'm going to square both sides. So that becomes r squared equals 2 squared. Well, instead of r squared, swap that out for x squared plus y squared, and now that equals 4. And hopefully by this point of the semester, you recognize that this is a circle. It's a circle centered at 0 and um, it's got a radius of two. So bonus points for imaginary candy. This says I'm in polar world and my radius is two. So if you are in polar world and your radius is two, then guess what you have? You have a circle, okay? Um, all right, so let's do another one. Number 18 says theta equals two pi over three. So I've got theta equals two pi over three. So what I'm going to do is because I want to introduce um, all this mess. Well, I do know that I can swap out tangents uh, for y over x. Okay, so I'm either going to get thetas or I'm going to get r's, one of the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tangent of both sides. So this says tangent theta equals the tangent of two pi over three. Well, do I know what the tangent of two pi over three is? I do. It is root 3. So now I've got the tangent of theta is the square root of 3. Well, now what do I do? Remember that tangent theta can get swapped out for y over x. So instead of tangent theta, I'm going to say y over x equals root 3. And now just get y by itself. So multiply both sides by x and you've got the square root of three times x. Do not put that x under the radical with the three, okay? And so all this is is a line. This is a fancy way of making a line, okay? All right, um, let's do a couple more. I've got three minutes. So let's see, we've got r equals four sine theta. So I wanna convert this polar equation, r equals four, sine theta and I want to convert this into rectangular so here's here's where this thing comes in I want this to be an r squared if I can make this an r squared then I can swap it out for an x squared plus y squared so what are your options if I square both sides I'm going to end up with 16 sine squared and that's not going to take me anywhere good so what I can do is this time multiply both sides by r so now I have 4 r sine theta so instead of squaring both sides, I multiply both sides by r. Well, now what is r squared the same thing as? That's x squared plus y squared. And what is r sine theta the same thing as? r sine theta is the exact same thing as y. So if I change this into a 4y, now what I have is, and this is going to get kind of exciting. All right, so I gotta I got to go faster. I'm going to subtract this. And so I've got an x squared plus a y squared minus 4y equals 0. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square on this one. So how do I complete the square? Take half of this and square it. What is half of 4? It's 2. Squared is 4. So I just made a 4. So what I do now is I've got an x squared plus rewrite this as a quantity squared so i get y minus 2 squared and that equals 4 okay so you have a circle that got shifted so you've got an x plus y minus 2 squared equals 4 and you've got a, a circle that got shifted up two units so your center would be at zero because there's nothing being added here and positive 2 so it's going to be this one right here okay and then you've got the rest of it. So you are good for 6.3.